Hello everyone, and thank you for joining. My name is Cesar. I'm an incident responder at Sukuri. I'm part of the team that handles the incidents that our clients bring to us. I'm from Port Portugal, which is that little country in the corner of Europe. In this webinar, I'll try to help you understand if there may have been any compromise on your website, and if any part of that compromise could have been credit card stealers. I'll share with you how credit card stealers operate and how you can look for almost all variations of it and how you can get all that malware cleared from the website. I will try to present all this information in a way that everyone can understand, regardless of technical level. We have an area on our website dedicated to some very useful guides that we write. We have just recently re released a Magento cleaning guide where the PC compliance subject is approached, so it should, de should, should definitely be checked out. Now, what exactly is data stealer malware? Data stealer malware is just a kind of infection that takes the data that your customers use to make purchases on our website and steal it. This kind of malware is the biggest enemy of any Magento website. This is because our, pri our private data is usually used on a daily basis and getting that data stolen is very valuable for attackers. The damage this inflicts can be very severe both for you and for your clients. So it may be a good idea to get the authorities involved depending on the severity of the breach and how much data may have been stolen. I strongly recommend that you consider alerting your clients if any breach happened as their data may have not yet been used by attackers. The webinar is divided into a few sections. How to check if there's been any compromise, how to look for the malware and how to clean it and what steps can be taken to minimize the risk of a reinfection. It's important to understand the implications of having a data breach on your website. If there's been any report or confirmation of a breach, it's important that it's investigated as soon as possible because any data that is stolen from the website is usually used within the first 12 hours. In some cases, the attackers just save the data for later or just try to sell it to someone. The technical term for the credit card, credit card data being sold is carding. Uh, many probably have already heard about it. Before we get started with the process, it's very important to take an immediate backup of everything related to the website and actions taken there, logs, files of the website, and that, the database. All this may be needed either for the investigation or to recover from anything that could have gone wrong or got broken during the cleanup. Now, let's go ahead and look for signs of compromise on the website. There's a few scenarios where a compromise can be the suspect. For example, if your customers report any strange behavior on the website, being it redirects, severe issues on the checkout, malware being flagged by external scanners, or just the clients complaining that their data was stolen after they bought something on your website. Also, if you notice that something has changed or shouldn't have been there, or you noticed an unauthorized access on the website, or a blacklist was imposed, this is a clear sign that the compromise probably happened. Now, the most common indicator of a compromise on Magento websites is just the reports from the clients. So it's very important that you discuss with them and you get as much information as possible. You need to understand what exactly is being reported and you get as much information as you can about the issue. If the report is about data theft, you may need to try to validate that it was actually through your website that happened and you try to establish a time frame that will assist on the investigations. You can ask questions such as, was the card used on any other website? When exactly did the purchase take place? And so on. You can also take proactive measures, which is, for example, you just try to make a purchase yourself on your website. But the problem with this is that if you use your own credit card on your own website that may potentially be infected, it's very risky. But I'll get into a more secure way to do this later in a minute. <clears throat> There's many ways that your checkout can behave badly. There can be redirects, pop-ups, strange files being loaded on the checkout, payments ending up on someone else's account, or just the checkout stop working all of a sudden. You have to ensure that the entire checkout process works properly at all times, both for your safety and your client's safety. Here we have an example of a bad behavior on the checkout page. You can see marked by the red squares that there's a few files loading from a domain called trafficanalyzer.biz. And on the right side, you can see that there's all the data that was inputted on the checkout form that is being sent directly to that domain. 
this is a, a very clear behavior of how credit card stealer works. And in this case, it has to be dealt as soon as possible. But in this case, it, it, it's one of the most easier to investigate examples because we have a direct domain name that we can just directly search for on the files or the database and it becomes much easier to find. Now, if you try to make a purchase on your website, you can just make use of a virtual credit card, which is a much more secure way to do online shopping. These kinds of cards are offered all throughout the world, either directly by your banks or any other external services. These kinds of cards have absolutely no relation with your actual identity or bank account. And since they also have a, a hard spending limit, the, the low risk if they get the, the risk if they get stolen is really low. Even if they manage to steal any amount of money, it will be just at the top of what you set. These kinds of cards are ideal to test on your website for any credit card seal possibility. You can make a credit card with a limit, let's say, $10, and you make a $1 purchase on your website. This leaves a, a margin of $9 that the attackers can use, and from there, you confirm that it actually was stolen. Some of these services that offer the virtual credit cards also allow you to keep track of any transactions that were failed either by lack of funds or any other reason. In these cases, you don't even need to leave uh, extra funds there for the attacker because you can just look for failed transactions. You, you, you have the card. If any transaction happens that you did not do or it's attempted, you know that it's being misused by someone. It's very important to keep in mind here that even if your data is not used by attacker, it does not mean that there isn't that the data wasn't stolen. It may have just been that it wasn't just used yet or ju they just decided not to use it for now. Or they just skipped it. They have a suspicion that there's something fishy going on there. They suspect that you are trying to track them and they may not use it. But this, this is a very rare occurrence. There are a few tools that you can use to scan your website or just check if it's blacklisted. We have a few examples such as Sukurisa Check, Hypernodes Mage Report, Mage Scan, or Virus Total. I strongly recommend that you make regular scans with Site Check and Mage Report because they provide the most insight on your website, especially on Magento, on most of, most of the occasions that you may need. Here we have an example of Site Check, which is very handy. It checks for a few blacklists, it scans for malware, and it gives you an immediate report of what it detects. So it's very good information that you can add directly to your investigation process that will come next. Mage Report checks your, your site for missing patches, any element that may be, may be vulnerable, such as a slash downloader and so on. It also checks for certain kinds of malware that are very specific to Magento, such as a credit card stealer called VisBot, as you can see here on the top right of the image. In this case, the site was infected with it, so it immediately alerted. Google has also recently started to flag certain credit card stealers. So it's very important that the issue, get, issue gets handled before Google detects it, or the traffic to your website will come to a standstill very, very fast. This is a very rare occurrence, but it's a possibility, so you want to avoid it at all costs. In some cases, usually it's good to just keep a regular check on VirusTotal, which checks directly several blacklists uh, directly through your website. And it's usually live data, so it's very good to keep an eye on this. Here, we have an example of a Google blacklist, which everyone always tries to avoid. And in credit card stealers, the, the damage is not just for the traffic or for you. It's your clients are also severely affected as well. So we need to keep a very close eye on these situations. The most common behavior of credit card stealers malware can be divided in roughly two categories one of which sends the data to external domains and is, is usually injected directly onto JavaScript files or as JavaScript code on the, on the site. It usually works by looking at what the current page is being loaded and it tries to work only when it's the checkout page, such as slash file checkout and so on and so on. The same kind of behavior <clears throat> can be found on that malware that also tries to steal login credentials. The, the, that kind of malware can just look for slash admin, which is the default 
default page and it just tries to act just on that page so that it doesn't either get extra data or something that the attacker isn't interested in. <clears throat> because it's usually in JavaScript files, this gets easily cached, cached by Magento's JavaScript merging functionality, which is a, a, a mechanism that Magento has where it takes a bunch of JavaScript files and just joins everything into a single file to make the, the page load go much smoother. Because instead of having to load five or six files or more, it just loads one or two. It becomes much more efficient. This kind of malware also gets sometimes injected as PHP code onto PHP file, but this case is much, much rarer. The other kind of malware stores the data directly among your website's files. And the data that is stored on a, a file is usually disguised as an image or a file with no extension within the media directory, which is slash media, most cases. This kind of method makes a file go over three megabytes very, very quickly. The attackers usually encrypt the data being stored, so it can only be read by them, which makes sense because they just want them to have access to the data. And because of this encryption, the, the size of the, the file grows very rapidly. Usually just one or two lines can easily go over one megabyte. This kind of malware can only be injected on PHP files because JavaScript cannot take any direct action to any file present on the server because JavaScript runs directly on the visitor's browser. So it isn't even handled by the server itself. The server just sends it and the browser runs it. Now, there is also a third kind of data stealer malware that just takes the data and emails, emails it directly to the attacker. This can only work as PHP files and is very, very easy to discover because all it takes is if you have email logging enabled on the, on the server, you can just use, you, you either look, use a monitoring system for the emails or just look at the logs yourself. And you, you, will, you will immediately see that there's something there that very, looks very strange to you and should not be there. Now it's time to find the malware. <clears throat> now, there's no need to go blind onto the investigation. So it's best if we start by using the data that we already have. We, we have the behavior that was spotted or reported. We have a time frame that we try to establish and any other information so that we can know what we are looking for, such as what was reported by the scanners and so on and so on. From there, we then look for other kinds of infections that may be present on the website, such, such as backdoors or anything else that the attacker may have tampered with. The best method to look for malware is just to look at what files are different from what they are supposed to do. If you manage to establish a possible time frame for when the compromise started, you can try to look for files that were changed closer to that date. You can also give a try to MST's free modified core files reporting tool, which just compares the Magento installation with an integral version of it. One issue with this tool is that it doesn't check all of the core files of Magento. It only checks the, the very most essential files for the installation to work. So there's many files that are not compared and you, you, you can all, cannot trust this 100%. Uh, but as a quick investigation tool, it works great because it also runs as PHP, so it's very easy for anyone to run it. Here we have some information how to use the diff command through command line interface, where you can compare the current installation of Magento with a freshly downloaded one. It's important that it's the same version of it, either 1.5 or whatever, and it reports back the differences that it spotted. From there, we can greatly narrow down the investigation scope because we don't even need to look at files that are as they're supposed to be. So we can just look at uh, any differences. A note here is that any modules that you may have installed will have to be compared separately because it will not come with that installation. So it's a very good idea to keep all the original versions that you installed stored somewhere secure. And if you update, you try to get a, an archived version of that, update, of that update and store it somewhere as well. There's also many programs that you can use if you are not familiar with command line interface. 
that can allow you to compare two folders. Oh, an example we have for Windows, for example, is diff merge. There's various that work on various operating systems. A solution is always there. You can also look for files that were modified some, some days ago, either 10, 20, 30, 40 days, whatever. But this can only be reliably trusted if you manage to establish a good time frame for the compromise. Because otherwise, you will just get unnecessary noise that may just send you in circles. Because there, the data may not interest, interest anything for the investigation. As I previously mentioned, files that hold stolen data on your server can easily grow over 3 megabytes. So it's a very good idea to look for big files. It's very rare that any actual web file will be over 3 megabytes. So here we have a command that just looks for files that are bigger than 3 megabytes. The result of this command will be mostly a few images with very high resolution and some archives. But you should be able to distinguish between both, and you know what you add, added or should be there and what is not supposed to be there. And you can focus the investigation on those files as well. At Sukuri, we have a backup service that takes backups of your website every day. And if each backup is done, you receive an email telling you how many files were added, how many files were removed, and how many files were modified. This works great as an integrity records keeper, as you can also see which exact files were affected. It makes a very good and cheap integrity monitoring solution, as well as providing secure backups of your website as they are stored away from your server, keeping them safe from anything that may happen or infection. This is an add-on service that we provide outside of our normal plans. Now, many of Magento's initial compromise starts with the creation of an admin user on the site. So it's very important that you regularly keep an eye on this and remove any users that should not be there. Here we have two examples of users that were added by an attacker. They usually use many times the email user at example.com or example at example.com or anything else. Important part here is if you don't recognize and you, you know it shouldn't be there, you have to remove it immediately and look for any compromise. Here, we have the most common functions used by attackers when the malware's objective is to steal data from your clients through your website. If you search on your files or database for these functions, you should be able to find at least 98% of the variations of this kind of malware. Unfortunately, you may need to have some PHP knowledge to make sense of some parts, but any developer should be able to assist you with this. You can search for any of these functions either through command line interface or any program that allows you to search for text on files. Here's two examples of data stealers that were present on the one page controller.php file. This is a file that directly handles the checkout process on Magento. On the left, you see the code using file get contents to send the data to the that was inputted on the form on the checkout page. <laughs> to the external domain directly. And from there, the attacker either stores it, uses it, or even may even try to sell it. On the right side, you can see the code that's using file put contents and file append function to store the stolen data on an image named cancel.gif on the affected site server. In this case, it's a very good example of what I previously mentioned, where you could just search for big files, and it would immediately flag this one. It would, it would probably be a few hundred megabytes by the time you detected it. So it would probably be very easy to spot. These two infections were present on the, on the exact same file. So the data was possibly being stolen by two different attackers, which, is, which is make, makes matters much worse because there's, there will be two people using it. Here we have some of the most common functions used by backdoors within Magento. There's also possibly some premium models that make, make use of some of these. So it's important that you check the integrity, the integrity of the modules before searching for backdoors so that you can rule them out and not spend time searching for something that's unnecessary. Here we have some examples of common backdoors. 
if you find any code that looks just like them, they are most likely backdoors. <laughs> most of these backdoors just take the code that the attacker sent to them and executes it. It can be from injecting some, some other malware to deleting anything that they want. And very, just a, one or two lines of code that can achieve a lot. It's very important that you keep a, a very high, uh, big eye on this and remove it as soon as it's possible. In any investigation, it's important that you look at, at your site's footer and other areas, either through the database or directly through Magento's backend, because they are a big target for attackers. It's something that only requires access to the backend to add. And since it loads everywhere on the website, it allows JavaScript to be placed, and it makes a high value target for attackers. Anything malicious added on these areas is usually very easy to recognize as it was not added by you or your team. And it's something that doesn't require any technical knowledge to check. This is an example of an infected footer links block where the credit card stealer was injected. It's encoded, yes, but it's easy to recognize that it's something that shouldn't be there. And no webmaster will, will probably add something like this. <laughs> In these two images, we can see the design configuration area of the store. Both miscellaneous scripts and miscellaneous HTML were injected by another data stealer malware. In this specific example, we can see that the code is, is looking for the checkout page where it then executes an external JavaScript file. In this case, it looks specific for one page, checkout, one step, or fire checkout. If, it, if the current URL matches that, it then runs the code. If you have trouble finding the malware, cleaning it, or any part of the process, or just want it to be handled by a, uh, an expert, just seek out help from a professional. It's better to be safe than sorry. And every day that there's malware present on your website, there's damage being done to you, your reputation, and your clients. Sucuri is available 24-7, 365 days a year. So if you need help, you can just come to us. Now it's time to go ahead and clean up the website. Before the cleanup can be started, you need to be sure that the backup is fully done and stored in a safe location outside your server. I recommend that you put your website onto maintenance mode at least while you are cleaning it to avoid further damage. As I previously mentioned, the back doors are a big pain. And if you are cleaning the website, but there are still back doors there, you may be in the middle of the cleanup and the attackers may be already attacking your website and reinfecting everything again. So it's very important that you try to put your website down or in maintenance mode before you, you clean it. If you haven't any technical knowledge or a technical team, if you have a technical knowledge or even a technical team, you can even put the website on a temporary location such as a staging environment and you attempt to clean up through there before moving it back to the live environment. If there's a possibility of high volume data being stolen, you should consider reaching out to the authorities. They will immediately ask you for the files of your website, your database, and any logs that you can grab. You should already have all this stored in a safe location by now. To fix the hacked files, you start by looking for any malware indication you may have previously obtained, such as results from an external scanner or the reports from the client. You then inspect the modified files that you found and there you can directly search for the malware related functions we previously saw. And if you saw any suspicious code, you can use some tools to help make better sense of that code. Or alternatively, you can simply restore those files to their known good version by just replacing them. For example, if there's an affected module, you can simply replace those files with a freshly downloaded version of it and it's done. You can move on to the next. In the end, you just have to test to the site to ensure that everything still works fine, especially the checkout, which is probably the most important part. <laughs> if any of the modifications is something that you yourself changed or your team, then you have to keep them in mind because they will be reported by the, the previous steps and you need to, to, be, to keep in mind that you yourself changed that or your team. And not all that is different is malicious. So it may be just as it can be called a false positive. <laughs> but when in doubt, it's best to double check. 
even Google can help find the answer to any suspicious code that you may found or anything, any doubt that you may have. As I previously mentioned, some modules in Magento come encoded to protect their code. They can easily look suspicious, and that's why it's very important that they are compared with their original version separately. In case there's some extra code on them, you just want to know what it does, you can use external tools such as DD code, and PHP, or JS Beautifier, which is just for JavaScript code. If you don't have any knowledge regarding programming or code, you can just consult with their developer, and they will tell you exactly what the code is, is doing. Here we have some examples on how you can easily take an encoded code and use it, use it on the external tools to have them decoded. In this case, here we have DD code. We just go there, put the code, hit the button, and it tries to decode it and presents the result. It's very, very simple. Here we have unphp, also the same the same way to operate, but it's good to keep in mind that one of them, when one of them can't decode it, the other the other one may be able to. So it's always good to to keep to keep both. Database infections are very rare to contain spam within Magento. The attackers prefer to keep the spam out, and usually they like to use only credit card stealers because it makes the webmaster have a harder time realize that anything actually happened on the website because they leave any trace of anything out. The, the webmaster may not realize it. The attackers usually focus the damage on the core config data table, more specifically the records that relate to the header, footer, and miscellaneous area. <clears throat> but this also means that it can be easily cleaned by just removing the code through the actual website's backend. Just log in, check those areas manually, and you immediately see the code there. They, that's usually all that they do. Now to wrap it up, we have some finishing touches to do. We need to reset the credentials of any users with elevated access on the website, change all credentials regarding FTP or, or SFTP, as well as the panel if it's used. You need to review the current elevated access users and check if they actually need that kind of access. Concept of least privilege, privilege applies here. You should only give as much access as that person needs. And when they, they no longer need it, you take it back. It's also very important that you clear all of the caches on the website. It's very, very important. I previously mentioned that a good part of credit card stealers get easily cached by Magento. So you may clean up the website and believe it's clean, but the malware, the malware may still be in the cache. And from there, the, the process can restart all over again. Then if any blacklist was imposed on a website, that's going to be need to be handled, handled as well. Now that we have analyzed all the files and the most important database locations, and we clean everything we have, we have to ensure that we take a few precautions to minimize the chances of reinfection as much as, much as possible. It's important to have all security patches applied on the site to reduce number of risks. You need to have a good backup system in, in place in case anything bad happens. All computers with access to the backend have to be scanned for malware, as malware can easily go from computer to the website, as it can go from the website to, to computers. A good practice is also to change the URL of your website's backend, well, the slash admin, change it to something else that the attackers may not be able to figure out. And you can also make regular purchase on your website, but of course, using the virtual credit cards that, that I previously mentioned to ensure that everything stays safe and that there's low risk of any data being leaked from your website. Here we have a few, a few good examples of what can be added to your website to get it better secured. We have firewalls, two-factor authentication systems. Those are the most important things. In this case, we have security firewall, mage firewall security, and then two two-factor authentications. And the last one, it's very good for especially big websites where they have a big team, where it logs every action that the, your admins are, are taking. So if any of those accounts gets compromised and an attacker manage, manages to log in, you can easily see what was done and so on. From there, it's much easier to mitigate the damage that was done. If the attackers got in, 
it's possible that they may return. So it's important that all accesses are constantly monitored to ensure that there's no unauthorized access. It's a good idea to take a look at the list of users on the site every once in a while. You should also plan, plan with your team what they should do in case anything happens. What to do, what to contact, what who to contact, and so on. If you have a very high traffic website, this is very, very important as the damage of any compromise is pro probably going to be very big for your business. Here we can also employ the concept of, concept of fire drills. Pretend that something happened on the website and see how your team responds. From there, you can also check that your backup systems also work. You can just try to restore it in some temporary location, see if the restore goes well, everything is restored properly, and so on. The objective here is to be preventive as well as reactive. You try to prevent anything from happening and you plan for in case it does happen in the end. A good firewall should take most of the burden required to keep your website secure. Our firewall has all the features to keep your website safe, even for, for the most laid back webmaster. Here we have just a, a brief overview of the, the features that it has. So it's also a good idea to check out. I guess that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. And let's see if we have some time for some questions. Back to you, Val. Thank you very much, Caesar. Uh, indeed, uh, we have uh, some questions. I will only go to a few of them because of the time uh, restriction here. Um, the first question that we got, Caesar, was what security plugins do you recommend for Magento specifically? That was approached in one of the slides. As I mentioned, if you there's, there's not even a need for many plugins within Magento. Most of the functions in Magento, uh, most of the protective functions in Magento can usually be done by some option on Magento. But the most important is, is really just a firewall and a two-factor authentication system. If you protect your backend, as I mentioned, it's usually the 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 initial point where the attackers go to. They just have an admin user, and from there they log. If you just protect the back end, that's a, that alone is a very, very big step in securing our website. Then a firewall just protects you against any attacks and the, the vulnerabilities that the attackers exploit to actually create the admin user that they use. So a firewall and a two-factor authentication system, it's good. But if you have a big website, you can also consider a plugin that logs the actions that your users take because well, if one of those users gets compromised, the attackers will just log in through there, and from there they ju can just wreak havoc inside. Thank you, Caesar. Um, there's another question uh, that sounds like if we check our Magento version and if uh, our version is lower than the current one, uh, can they presume? So the owner of the website can can they presume that the website is not safe? Or how can they check if their website is secure? In Magento, not having the latest version, it's not everything. It's more important to just keep ensure that the, the security patches themselves are installed. The, the best way here is to just check on Mage Report as it makes an analysis of your website. It lists what patches may be missing on your website and what are the most vulnerable areas. This way, you don't need to go in blind and try to secure every single thing. You can just focus on those specific ones. And then from there, you can look beyond. The, the version itself in Magento, it can mean something, but it's not everything. OK, thank you, Caesar. Um, another very good question here. Um, where are the most common places to find malware inside a Magento website? Yeah, that was also a push on one of the slides. The, the most common locations are just headers, footers, miscellaneous HTML, and so on. But that's because the attackers want to keep as low profile as they can so that they can steal the most data that they can before the webmaster catches up to them. And those areas are something that just require backend access. The attackers just get an admin account, go there, and just 
manually, even manually add that code there. Something very simple. Just log on to the back end, go to the design area, look for footer blocks, header blocks, or miscellaneous HTML and so on and so on. And you just look from there. That's in credit card stealers. There's also other kinds of malware such as backdoors and so on. But those are usually on the files. Malware for Magento on the database is very, very rare. It can be very rare. Most of it can be done through the backend itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sam is asking us a rather longer question, so I'll try to uh, make it shorter so everybody understands. Basically, it says, if uh, changing the checkout name, um, is, it, is this a reasonable prophylactic measure? So instead of having something like checkout or fire checkout, they would change it to something like, you know, slash make your purchase slash. Would that, you know, help with the malware attacks and everything? Unfortunately, it really depends a bit on the attacker, for example. For investigation purposes, when it's time to actually track the malware, an action that I take is actually go to the, ch actually try to purchase something on the website. And from there, I easily see what the checkout URL is. The attackers, depending on their knowledge or if it was a fully automated attack and depending how complex it is, it may do the same. So it may work up to a degree, but it's not something that can really be relied on. Good. Uh, another question touches the PCI, and the question is, does PCI offer any guidance for incidents? PCI compliance, uh, they give some help, but it's not something that that really helps much. And it's also something that it's better if we approach over email or something, or just check directly on the guide, because PCI compliance is a whole subject on itself, and we just don't have time to, to detail all that. Uh, apparently, another uh, very often question, like I think we have this one four times, is does is, is there a reason why specific badly coded themes or extensions are more prone to problems than others? And if you can give some suggestions of how they can check the code, if you know the code itself allows vulnerabilities or not. Mm, that's very, very tricky. But sometimes there's it, it, a part here is that it will require some coding knowledge. So a normal webmaster may not be able to look for it, but a development a developer may be able to look for it somewhat. It's usually easy to spot, for example, sometimes a theme or a plugin or something else may have the functionality to upload something. And sometimes that upload function is not protected. That's uh, very easy to spot, especially for a developer, because they will see that there's no access control being done on that specific part. And from there, they just may be able to mitigate it directly. But doing this automatically with some tool or something, it's very, very hard because either, either through uh, a vulnerability scanner on the website, which is something that may require some payment to have a good one made. Other than that, it's best to just check with a good knowledgeable developer that knows how to, to, to securely code. So that should be the last question for today because we almost are uh, above time. Now, I do want to mention that, yes, everyone will get the slides from today. And we also gonna have the video recording for you guys. Some of you that uh, joined later asked this. And of course, all the links and everything inside the slides, you will be uh, able to get them. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Caesar, for your time and answering the questions. And we do welcome everyone uh, for the next webinar and please stay tuned. Thank you very much. And before you exit, make sure you go through the survey questions and we welcome you again at, uh, next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.